Welcome to breakfast. Thanks for joining us. Good morning to you. Great to have you. Hello. Good morning. Morning, Johnny. Hey there. I'm so excited. Right, let's go live. Oh, thank you. It makes me laugh every single day. Well, it's going to be a glorious day today. Happy rush hour, everybody. <laughs> I'd just like to thank BBC Breakfast. Start your day the BBC Breakfast way on BBC One and iPlayer. Live from New York, this is BBC News. Five Americans jailed for years in Iran, freed today in a controversial $6 billion deal. World leaders are gathering right here in New York as the United Nations General Assembly gets underway. And comedian Russell Brand cancels his tour dates amid sexual assault allegations. I'm Sumi Somaskanda bringing you BBC News from New York tonight, where world leaders are convening for the United Nations General Assembly. We'll have more on that major international summit coming up. But first, five Americans are free after a complex prisoner swap with Iran. The Americans who were imprisoned in Iran for years are on their way home to the U.S. Now, they were freed on Monday as part of a prisoner swap mediated by Qatar. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Let's take a look at some other stories making news. Uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Canada's security agencies are actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between Indian government agents and the murder of a Sikh leader in British Columbia this past June. Trudeau says he had raised concerns, quote, personally and directly to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the G20 last week. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un returned to his country on Tuesday after a week-long visit to Russia. The visit included talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Kim said North Korea would offer its full and unconditional support to Russia, alluding to the war in Ukraine. Now, Kim also invited Putin to visit North Korea at a convenient time. And negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and Hollywood's major studios will resume on Wednesday as both sides attempt to end the four-month writer's strike that has upended the movie and television industry. Writers are seeking higher pay and protections around the use of artificial intelligence. You're watching BBC News. The comedian Russell Brand has postponed his current UK live tour amid media investigations into sexual assault claims. London's Metropolitan Police confirms it has received a report of an alleged sexual assault in 2003 and is in contact with the woman. Four women have accused Brand of sexual assault and emotional abuse, allegations he denies. One of them, who was 16 at the time, has been speaking to the BBC as our media correspondent David Salito reports. And uh, just before we go, the U.S. military has found a debris field in South Carolina from the F-35 jet that went missing after a crash on Sunday. They had asked for the public's help to find the jet after its pilot ejected due to a, quote, mishap. And that's the update we have on that story for you. Thank you for watching BBC News. Don't forget that you can head to our website, bbc.com, for all the latest news and information around the clock. Stay with us. I'm Jordan Dunbar. I was a comedian and a drag performer in Belfast. I knew the scene. It was just a regular Friday night. As I chatted with Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton, both of them wished me a happy birthday. So that was my beginning with American presidents. I've seen the headlines. What did the boffins actually find? Are you allowed to call them boffins? With affection. <laughs> There's always more to the story with our podcasts. Listen on BBC Sounds.
Live from New York, this is BBC News. Five U.S. citizens imprisoned in Iran are heading home in a prisoner swap. World leaders converge here in New York for the U.N.'s annual General Assembly, but some key people in power are missing this year. And the U.K. copes with dangerous flooding. I'm Sumi Somaskanda in New York, where the annual United Nations General Assembly has kicked off. We'll preview what to expect this weekend. But first, five U.S. citizens who were imprisoned in Iran are now traveling home. They were freed on Monday as part of a complex prisoner swap mediated by Qatar. The four men and one woman were flown out of Tehran to Qatar, then on to Washington. Around the world and across the U.K., this is BBC News. Let's take a look at some other stories making news now. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Canada security agencies are actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between Indian government agents and the murder of a Sikh separatist leader in British Columbia in June. Trudeau says he has raised concerns, quote, personally and directly to India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the G20 last week. An unusually well-preserved dinosaur skeleton known as Barry is on display in Paris ahead of its sale at an auction next month. It's expected to fetch up to a whopping $1.2 million. That's 970,000 pounds. The Camptosaurus, which is about 150 million years old, was discovered in the 1990s in the U.S. state of Wyoming. And Prince William has arrived in New York for the first time since 2014. The Duke of Wales will speak at the Earthshot Summit on Tuesday and help announce the 15 finalists. Here he is at the Billion Oyster Project on Governor's Island meeting with volunteers. You're watching BBC News. The Ukrainian government has dismissed six deputy defense ministers, saying a reboot of the system is needed. It comes after the appointment of a new defense minister, seen here less than two weeks ago. In recent months, the department has been accused of corruption over the procure procurement of some supplies. And just to note, the BBC says it is urgently looking into the issues raised by allegations made against its former employee. Thank you for watching BBC News. Stay with us. Morning. Come and have a seat. Now, of course, I'm not going to go easy on you. There are some okay, really big so questions we've got to try and get answers to this morning. But I'll be fair. And we, we just want to hear what you've got to say. So, shall we get on with it? We're rolling. Here we go. Join me to hear from the biggest names inside and outside politics. Sunday with Laura Koonsberg. Watch on BBC iPlayer. Live from New York, this is BBC News. World leaders are gathering right here in New York as the United Nations General Assembly gets underway. Five Americans jailed for years in Iran, freed today in a controversial $6 billion deal. And rescue and recovery teams continue to work around the clock in Libya after deadly flooding leaves tens of thousands homeless. I'm Sumi Somaskanda. Thank you for joining us. World leaders are here in New York this week for the annual United Nations General Assembly, convening this time under the shadow of the second year of war in Ukraine and amid a series of global climate catastrophes. 140 heads of state and government are set to attend, including for the first time in person, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He will then head to Washington uh, to meet with U.S. President Joe Biden there. Now, high on the agenda for this year's summit is the climate. 
In 2015, the General Assembly set goals for sustainable development to be reached by 2030. We're now halfway there, and progress appears to be lagging. UN records show the world is on track to meet just 15 percent of the sustainability targets. Half a billion people are likely to be still living in poverty in 2030, and 100 million children still will not be in school. My colleague Katrina Perry spoke about the issues at stake with the president of the UN General Assembly, Dennis Francis. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Let's take a look now at some other stories making headlines. The U.S. military says it has found debris of an F-35 jet that disappeared over South Carolina. They had asked for the public's help to try and locate the aircraft. It went missing after its pilot ejected due to a, quote, mishap on Sunday. Members of the community are urged to avoid the area. Ovidio Guzman Lopez, son of the jailed Sinaloa cartel leader Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Loera, pleaded not guilty to drug trafficking, money laundering and other charges during his first U.S. court appearance on Monday in Chicago. Guzman Lopez was extradited to the United States from Mexico on Friday. And Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said Canada's security agencies are actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between Indian government agents and the murder of a Sikh leader in British Columbia this past June. Trudeau says he raised concerns directly to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi last week. The Indian government says it rejects the claims as, quote, absurd. You're watching BBC News. In eastern Libya, anti-government protests have erupted after the collapse of two dams during a storm triggered deadly flooding. Our correspondent Anna Foster has more. And that was Geir Pedersen, the United Nations Special Envoy for Syria, talking to me a little bit earlier here in New York in the context of the UN General Assembly. All right, stay with us here on BBC News. That's all for us here in New York. We'll leave you with some live pictures of London as we hand off to our colleagues there. They'll take over at the top of the next hour. Stay with us on BBC News. Hello there. There's definitely been a gear change with the weather story in recent days and all